Hey, como estan? Welcome. I'm Tracker Bud. Today I'm going to give you my review of the new science fiction flick, District 9 directed by Neil Blomkamp and starring Charlotte Copley. Hmm, I enjoyed this movie and overall, I recommend it, but at the same time I was disappointed. On the disappointed part, I think I came to this movie with some expectations that were a little too high. The previews and word of mouth had made me believe this was going to be an innovative and emotionally stirring film. The reality is, District 9 is pretty much a standard action adventure film, but on the plus side, it is a really well done one. Before I go on, let me explain some of the genuine history that inspires at least part of this film. This movie is titled after the real life District 6 in Cape Town, South Africa. In the 70s, during the apartheid regime, the government declared District 6 a whites-only area and forcibly removed some 60,000 residents from their homes only to relocate them to a very bleak area several miles away. Okay? The rest of this review has some spoilers, so beware. The plot of District 9 is a sort of allegory of that very dark part of South African history. In this movie, an alien spacecraft arrives above South Africa without explanation. When it is opened, the aliens, called prawns, are found to be sick and starving workers, whose leaders have abandoned them. The prawns are placed in a government camp. The camp quickly turns into a slum, known as District 9. The earthling residents of Johannesburg decide they don't like aliens living nearby, so a corporation named MNU is hired to relocate the prawns to a nice, clean, concentration camp, several miles away. I think you see the similarities. The movie, especially the first part, is filmed in a mockumentary style. It is the style that I thought would help make it innovative. It does, but it so closely parallels the real historical events that it seems almost too clever. I think it was overdone. Also, while Charlotte Copley does an excellent job of acting, the other characters are not developed enough to allow us to relate with their plight. This is especially true of the prawns. We see their suffering, but don't really feel much sympathy. The two prawns we do get to know, Christopher Johnson and his son, are better developed, but they seem to be the only ones worth saving. Another thing on the negatives list is the overuse of cliches. The greedy, evil, corporation. The unscrupulous doctors and mad scientists. The soldiers who enjoy killing a little too much. The ruthless crime lord. And last but not least, the always popular, go on, save yourself, no, I won't leave you behind, scene. I could also mention similarities to the films Alien Nation and David Cronenberg's The Fly. However, I might be getting a little carried away with the negatives. Once I got rid of my preconceptions and just sat back, I realized that this movie is greater than the sum of its parts. First the mockumentary style and excellent special effects help make the prawn camp and its surroundings seem like a very real place. You can practically smell the garbage and feel the dust and grime. The CGI alien prawns are artfully done and never stand out as just an effect. As for the cliches, well, as they say, there is nothing new under the sun, but done in this combination and style, it works. It helps that this movie takes place in South Africa. After all, not all aliens have to land in Washington or New York. The acting of Charlotte Copley is a plus. In this type of movie, we expect a dashing hero, but instead Copley plays a bureaucratic nerd in over his head and does it well. Yeah, yeah, District 9 is not exactly a modern classic, but it is a well-done sci-fi action film with a different take on some classic science fiction themes. I give it a 7 on a scale of 1 to 10. I suggest you go out and see it. See you later.